name is Bear Siragusa, and you are listening to the Hunting Hound Podcast presented by W Hunting Supply. Kevin Murphy in my living room. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. No, it's been uh, last time we had just gotten back from Sweden with Eric and his amazing dogs, fox hunting. And then uh, since then, we've hunted roe deer. Yes. With a beagle, my beagle pup. And we've hunted hair with Bjorn Ivar Scheidevin is his name. One day with just him and one day with him and his granddaughter Ilva. And the the dog we were hunting over was that that was kind of neat neat deal because it was a um a Halden hound. And the Halden hounds are one of the rarest breeds of dog in the world and certainly the most the rarest breed in Norway and it's a it's a it's a little hound looks like a cross between a beagle and a treating walker or something yeah kind of a heavy duty uh, fox hound yeah looking a little bit smaller not as leggy as a fox hound but much more leggy than a than a beagle Mm -hmm. yeah um and that that was a that was a cool thing because th- that particular dog too it you know it wasn't just some random individual that particular dog last year there was twenty five puppies born in total in the world from that breed and he was the father of eleven <laughs> eleven of those <laughs> that's amazing yeah a heritage hound for sure that uh, somewhere or another we need to keep going yeah I'm hoping it sounded like his uh, his granddaughter was pretty pretty into it so i'm hoping she takes over and carries that torch that would be that would be fun if she did that i tried to put a bug in her ear um she's uh, majoring in wildlife um, biology and wants to, to do that for her career and um, i think uh, if she took uh, some interest and got involved with that hound that uh, she could help save it Oh, I think so too. Yeah. No, she was, uh, she, that, that was a cool deal, you know, cause she was really into the hunting, really into the wildlife management aspect of what she was learning. And, and, um, it was a lot of fun to see her get to talk to, to you and kind of get, you know, the, you guys shared some interests despite being from different continents. She was, a you know, you're a guy, she's a girl, and you're – how old did she say she was? 20? 20. Yeah. She was 20. So, but still, like, it's amazing to me what – how hunting, especially, you know, just hunting in general, but in this case, small game hunting, um, can connect people. Because, like, you guys had – you guys got on, like, a house on fire pretty much right away. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. She was an interesting person to, to talk to and – uh she had been around a few Americans at college, mm-hmm. and um, she asked me if I knew about wool. <clears throat> I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good wool. I said, I grew up with scratchy wool, and we didn't wear it. We wore death cloth, cotton, cotton. that was said to be insulated. Yeah. What a what a, sh- what a sham. <clears throat> I mean, a sham. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, we had some good conversations uh, talking about hunting, mm-hmm. uh, Social media, what's going on out there with that, and uh, try to get her to get if she's going to get involved with it to get some good solid information that people will want to follow you because they're hungry for what you know. And her grandfather has got a treasure trove of information in his head from years and years of hunting with the this dog and he started off as a young man he said 10 years old with a dunker hound Mm -hmm. i think they had probably one of the best ones in the community that he lived in because he said that during easter break they hunted day and night the whole time and i think they caught seven foxes that's right and they didn't have a den interior so they built a fire took shifts digging them out of the ground yeah you know how much greater can it get to, to to do that 
Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's old school. That That is old school where you, you build a fire and then you move the fire and dig down the ground that you, you know, cause Easter it's, you know, there's still six feet of snow on the ground. So you're digging down to the ground, building a fire, letting the fire thaw the ground a little bit. You move the fire, dig until you hit frozen ground <laughs> and keep digging until you're through that frost layer. That's, I mean, that's old school. That is old school. That's a, that was a cool story. I like that. I like that story a lot, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, and it's funny though, because you know what, when he was talking about that was before the mange epidemic here that killed most of the foxes. So a lot of the Norwegian breeds were dual purpose breeds. They had the ability to hunt hare and foxes and the desire to hunt both. Um, but nowadays, as you know, after the, after the fox, um, population collapsed in the, in the seventies, the, the, the dogs have become very specifically hair dogs because the hair population flourished. Um, so it, it, it can be hard to find one of the Norwegian breeds that is willing to run Fox, but the Halden hound seems to be the one that has actually held on to some of those, uh, some of those genes, some of those instincts to want to run, to want to run Fox. Um, so yeah, no, it was, it was really cool. The dog's name was Glunt, G L U N T, which means boy, apparently in, uh, in, uh, Northern Norway dialect. And, uh, yeah, it was, that was fun. Yeah. He was a very steady hound, mm -hmm. uh, never, uh, got excited, never, uh, Slowed down, just steady, Freddie out there on the pace. Yep. Uh, his barking might, um, he may be, you know, you could tell by his barks um, after talking to Bourne, said, okay, you know, I'm thinking, did he, is that a loss? Or, and then did he, did he recover on the bark? Is he, is he got it jumped? And so you could hear in the different, different tones and, uh, if you're a dog man, you could get close to figuring out what he was doing. Of course, we had the GPSs too, and we were looking. I think he ran for a total of 22 kilometers. He in the beginning he ran the the uh, uh, mountain hare within mm -hmm. probably what nine yards of you rock dis rock killing distance. I think is what yeah, you said. That's right. <laughs> so I got to see see uh, really my first. Uh, I call it a snowshoe type rabbit, the hair uh, almost solid white. It was probably, I would say, 75, 80% white. Yep. It's a little bit mottled on the thing. Uh, looked like a small roe deer jumping across the road. Yeah. So it would have been a challenge to to shoot shoot that 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 uh, that hair. I was really amazed at the leaps that it made and it was gone. Yeah. So, yeah, it was very very exciting hunt with me. Uh, my rubber book boot stuck to the ground. Bear had to get me a rubber mat. He said, let me show you this trick. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm looking at some pictures last night that he sent me and some pictures that I had. And, you know, I wear those same rubber boots in the summertime. So they're not the best pick. I would look like a pilgrim. I'm sure <clears throat> when I paraded around with people and they saw me in those, uh, Alaskan tennis shoes. So the, the, uh, um, I've got the name, name them tough, something rough and tough. Yeah. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. So, but yeah. yeah, when I come back, I'll, I'll leave those at the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, uh, but I mean, at the same time, you know, it was cold and we started, the ground was solidly, solidly frozen. Um, really, really, especially yesterday or a day before yesterday, because we hunted with Bjorn for two days and day before yesterday, it was, uh, foggy as anything. I mean, you couldn't see more than 50, 60 yards most of the day. Um, and yeah, just cold and raw and miserable, um, weather wise. But, you know, we, one of the funny things about hair hunters is, you know, they'll hear is they'll build fires and we, we built two rip roaring fires and warmed ourselves up there and toasted some sandwiches. And yeah, it was a, it was a good time. Yeah. Pulled, pulled up a couple of blocks of wood the first day, made some seats, sat around, born, had a very interesting, uh, piece of equipment. It had a backpack with a stool built in yeah. <laughs> and he said, that's what the hair hunters used. And, uh, yeah, he, uh, 
It was he had his thermos in there, an assortment of I think coffee and maybe cocoa, yeah, and a few snacks and stuff. And mm -hmm. I could see where that would come in very handy. What I have found since I've been to Norway is that hunting is a process mm -hmm. where it's a, um, a lot of social socializing. Um, it is not uh, built around how hey, many we can get. Mm -hmm. We just want to try to get one, mm -hmm. get on the scoreboard, watch the dogs run, fellowship. Mm -hmm. um, and my time in my life, I can handle that. No problem. Probably wouldn't have been a good thing if I came over here when I was somewhere between 25 and 50 years old. <laughs> Probably would have had to take a chill pill yeah. to fit in or be out there running with the dogs. Right. So um, I've thoroughly enjoyed and it's made me really look into the way that we hunt in the U.S. with my friends and that some of that needs to be brought back over to us, which I'm, I'm doing some, we, we, we socialize and I use a stool, uh, when I hunt, uh, a lot of people like look at me, but the next time we come out, some people have stools with them. Um, we still, we have the one, one thing over here is the one dog rule that uh, would really be interesting back home if we had to just have one dog in the field. Mm. Um, that's, uh, really, really does handicap you. I do believe mm -hmm. uh, as far as puppy training, that's really hard. I mean, that's that's where how to train a young dog. If you've got a really good dog or media, it doesn't matter. Dogs just do better in pairs. Yep. I, I, I think um, they're made to work in packs. Uh, so the one dog rule is a handicap. Mm -hmm. But then if you've got a really good dog, you can show it off. Right. And um, people that maybe not have so good of dogs, that shows off too so oh it it becomes real obvious real quick yeah it's you know that's what made eric's dog so interesting to watch is that they were they were from you know what would they call it from a, a truck to tree finished dog all four of them and then the terriers were their own thing but they were they they were well well trained as well so you know and, and this this dog we ran uh yesterday and the day before and glunt um you know you could you could tell he was getting older you know just not didn't have that youthful bounce in his step anymore but that was that was a good dog in his time that was a that was a good dog. I think we could probably say he had the dad body, right? Yeah, the dad <laughs> body. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, a little. The gut was hanging a little lower, maybe, and yeah, no, he was. Uh, but he did a he did a good job, and I could tell he was tired uh, yesterday. But he 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 grounded out, and we had uh, yeah an enjoyable morning. We didn't see anything yesterday. I think he had, I did a total of what sixteen kilometers probably time he got back to the car yesterday yeah so i think that dog probably did close to 30 what would that be It'd be almost 40 almost 30 40 days, kilometers so that would be kilometers. yeah so that would be two days yeah over two days so he i mean he did for an old boy he did a he did a really good job i thought and um you know yesterday it was just kind of slow going uh slow to start the trail and once he got the track rolling he got the impression that the hair was just staying far enough ahead of him that he never was able to get it to warm up a little bit. Um, which, uh, yeah, that happens sometimes. And it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun having you here, Kevin. It's, it's, I've really enjoyed, uh, getting out and hunting and especially hearing, you know, your insights and your opinions and your, uh, you know, get your thoughts on how things are done here and, and come with some perspectives that I know both Eric and I have talked to him since we got back, you know, both of us appreciated that a lot, you know, because you brought, uh, you brought a level of experience uh, that neither of us have and, and a different perspective and an experienced eye, not just a different perspective, but an experienced eye, which has been uh, a lot of, a lot of fun because it's definitely made me look at things a little bit differently and notice some things that you pointed out things that I wouldn't necessarily have noticed in my own dogs, which has been, uh, which has been fun. It's... So I hope, uh, yeah, hope we get you back here at some point. Oh, I'd, I'd love to come back. I've got bitten by the bug. I just, 
Every morning I wake up and look out the window and I see something new, something different. I think about something. Uh, been here for what, um, like 11 days in, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, like I, 12, 12 days yeah, now. Cause you yeah. got here Wednesday, Wednesday last Wednesday yeah. and it's now f the following Monday. Monday. Yeah. So, so yeah, time has gone by so fast. I can't believe it. I'm headed back to work here in like an hour. Kevin is pointing his nose down towards Oslo and going to see some of those, uh, I was planning on going to the Viking uh, Ship Museum, but it's closed. That was uh, high on my list to to, uh, to go and see that. Mm. Uh, one thing I've noticed about the individuals here in Norway, everybody is out and about, lean and mean, out on trails, walking in the countryside. It may not even be a park. Uh, mm. uh, around their house, they're outside doing chores, and I just don't see that uh, – back home where I live. I mean, no. uh, there's not people, they're not, they're not in motion. And, uh, uh, the biggest majority of the people here are lean and mean and slim and long and they're outside. Yep. They are outside doing, doing, doing work chores, enjoying themselves. Uh, it's been a very interesting trip. Uh, I came with a smile on my face. I'm going to leave with a bigger smile on my face. <laughs> uh, you're more than welcome to come in to the good old USA and spend some time with me. Oh, and you can critique, critique my dogs. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be pretty easy for you to do. Uh, Eric's dogs were like the drone of dogs. Uh, remote control. The man just turn them loose and they oh, yeah. go on a mission to find some game. And uh, They were like just, Marines. Uh, yeah. Yes. Just, yeah. Uh, and the Den Terriers, I just... Man, if I could take a dog, ever seem like every trip I go on, I want to go take a dog back with me. Yeah. I went out west last uh, in the in the springtime to run uh, the hare in the desert with the Saluki and uh, the greyhound uh, with some um, uh, wolfhounds mixed in, mm -hmm. and uh, just try to talk myself into saying, "Well, I think I could use one of those back home." Yeah, and uh, see the den terriers that. Uh, Eric had and watch them work and mm. just man, I'm just a little dog with a great big giant heart. Oh, yeah. uh, jump off into the den and, and and be face barking at a fox trying to flush it out. Mm. Uh, I learned about two types of the den tears, ones that just tackle and the ones that flush. Mm -hmm. I find that very amazing yeah. to see that uh, dogs and dogs are you know like our oldest um, domesticated animal, um, mm. and they've been around with us forever. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just it's just amazing what they can do. We went to the um, border collie uh, uh, trials, field yep, trials we, yesterday. We a sheepdog trial on the way back from hare hunting yesterday. That was pretty fun. And you told me what you knew about those dogs, which I was amazed because uh, you was doing a uh, a bit a bit whistle. Okay, this whistle means left. This means right. This means circle around. And mm -hmm. I was truly amazed that yeah. uh, that you had that in your. Uh, uh, tool chest uh, oh <laughs> yeah i spent a lot of time when i was a kid um watching the sheepdog trials there was a farm not far from the house that um that uh, had a lot of training seminars and put on some very big uh, trials uh, a couple of times a year and i would always just kind of skulk around there when they were doing stuff and soak it all in and uh yeah got to got to train a little bit and things like that that was that was good fun um but yeah, it's, it's fun to see it. It's, it's getting bigger and bigger here. And it was, it was really interesting yesterday because we had, we got there and watched a dog have more or less a perfect run. That was, that was a dog that I think came in second place in total. We missed the winning run, but that dog came in second place. And then we immediately saw two runs where both of them ended up being train wrecks, but both of them ended up being train wrecks for completely different reasons. And I, and I don't mean that critically like train wrecks isn't, it shouldn't have happened. It was like, this was a nursery trial. So it was for younger dogs. And you know, the, the things those dogs did made total sense. Um, but it was really interesting because both of them ended in a disqualification, which is not uncommon in the sheepdog trialing world. Uh, but for two very, very different reasons. One, because it was a little bit too, a little bit too, intense predatory with the sheep and then the other one because it was not willing to engage to to the degree that the sheep actually showed any willingness to respect the dog 
So yeah, it was that was that was good fun. I was glad we got to catch that and and we've eaten eaten a bunch of Norwegian food. You got to try the Jäger Grita, the uh, the hunter's pot. Oh, that was very good. Which very was good. Uh, I, th- I thought you was I thought you were gonna like, and you got to eat that uh, very first night you were here. We got to eat that. Um, I guess the first night it was moose burgers, and then we went up to the mountains, and you got to eat that uh, sour cream porridge. Oh yeah, that was that was great too. That uh, bear was kind of like, well, you're either gonna like it or not like it. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and then I, I go over there to get um, a uh, a bowl of it, and somebody wanted me to doctor it up. I think I talked about that a little bit on the last episode, but yep. it was like truly amazing, good. Yeah. No, we, that that was good, and then we had the um, uh, these like hunter pancakes made of bacon and potato pancake with uh, like caramelized cheese and lingonberry uh, jam at Eric's. Sweet, salty, ooey gooey, and good. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> oh man, those were so good. And then we. Uh, Last night we had the the Norwegian, the most Norwegian meal we've had so far. I think uh, that's. I think you called it the surf and turf. Yeah, meal. that's right. The Norwegian <laughs> version of surf and turf, which was, uh, which was the Eurasian J on crackers, and the uh, Eurasian woodcock on just by itself. That was really really good. The J two was okay. It was not. Uh, I'm not going to claim it's my favorite game bird me but it was good uh the woodcock was real good and then we had um moose steaks and whale steaks yes for dinner that i could check that off my list that's what i I was talking to bear before i came over said i would like to try some whale meat i know that's on y'all's uh menu over here uh we went down to the local uh grocery store there it was in the frozen food Mm -hmm. um Oh, and I got a big chunk of it and took it back and cooked it up last night. If I hadn't known it was whale, I would have thought it was some other kind of game meat. It had just a small, small, little bit different taste to it. But uh, And he just pan fried it in a skillet with some butter. That way I could taste it 100%. Mm-hmm. It was outstanding. Oh, that's it was outstanding. So. I'm good because it's it's funny looking though, isn't it? Like you, oh yes, yeah. You, you pull it out and it's as dark as almost purple. It it's, is bizarre looking, look, yeah. like a bruise type meat. Yeah, uh, in there, but the texture was like like a fillet bignon. Yeah, uh, texture on it. Uh, cut it up and um, you could sort of take off chunks with your fork. Yes, like yeah. a couple couple wiggles with the fork and you got a good chunk off. Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, I, Come back, I'll eat it again. Yeah. I will eat it again. Uh, probably like surf, turf, and air. <laughs> surf, turf, and air. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so. That's right. No, we, we've had some good meals and some good company. Our, my buddy Simon came out uh, came out bird hunting, bird hunting with us, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> Felt a little bad for Kevin. We was, I was three steps behind him and he was half a step behind Simon when this bird flew up. So Kevin came, you know, Sweden did a good job, you know, showing what it, what it was good for. But, uh, Kevin came all the way to Norway to watch an Australian shoot a blue jay. (laughs) And, you know, it brought back good memories. It it brought back memories of me being with uh, my childhood friends, uh, out, with our BB guns, trying to get anything. Everything was always in season when you're a kid. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no close season. That's right. There's no sacrilegious anything. We would even, we would shoot everything mm-hmm. uh, or shoot at it. So uh, sometimes uh, I can remember one day that we got after Blue Jay, uh, me and Joel Gresham. He's now passed away. He's a good friend of mine. And um, I was thinking maybe uh, Kurt Robinson was with us there, and he just passed away recently. Mm. And um, we got after some Blue Jays, and it took 
all three of us to bring a blue jay down. Is so right? <laughs> I kind of it, it brought me back to my childhood when I started that. Shot down so, in a blaze of glory. So uh, with the BB guns, uh, so that's no big deal. Like I said, all I want to do is be uh, in the picture on the hunt mm. uh, with good friends and with a gun in my hand. Mm. Uh, hopefully, a dog by my side. That day we we didn't have any. I got to see the uh, elusive. Caper Cali from seven to 800 meters away, sitting in the top of a tree, mm. which just my brain, my range finder, uh, just couldn't work. Mm. Um, bear spotted it with his young 35 year old eyes. <laughs> he was seeing a lot of things, uh, uh roe deer, uh, in the, in the frost, their tracks. I couldn't see it. I mean, eventually I could get to, uh, a distance that I could, but uh, he has he has had an eye for the game. Hmm. We were walking back, and he says, "Simon, he had a pair of binoculars with him, and he says, what's is that? Is that a bird in the tree?'" And they got to looking, and confirmed it, and then finally he gave me a landmark, and I looked and took the binoculars, and I could see this Capricali, and I just immediately thought it was a female. Um, and because the I females was, are like half the size yes, of, the, yes, of the adult males, yeah, yeah. is half the size, and I'm just sitting there staring. So we got three, we got an Australian, two and two Americans, uh, uh, given this caper Cali, the stink eye, and of course, what any animals do when you start staring at them for long periods of time, they feel the heebie jeebies and it flew off. Then the conversation went to how far was that? And he says, it's seven, 800 meters to that bird. Mm. And um, that was just like unbelievable. I had seen some up close and personal over in Sweden, um, pretty much rock throwing distance. Yep. Coming down the road, they were out um, uh, filling their crawl with uh, with uh, rocks, their gizzard. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> on that and uh, saw three big males over there and then one female that I had never even seen a picture of, mm. of, of all the little research that I did on the caper Kelly just automatically goes to the male yep. and they're not the female. So uh, we ended up seeing three, four over there. There was two that morning. Mm -hmm. Seemed like we seen another one. You saw two more. So, yep. so we saw caper Kelly. I saw a, a large fox squirrel type squirrel mm -hmm. and uh Sweden, um, the foxes over there. Mm -hmm. I saw some black grouse, mm -hmm. uh, the little songbird, the, the yeah, the, the little uh, chickadee, the, the tala eater, yep. fat eater bird. Yep. Um, over here, uh, we saw the mountain hare, roe deer, uh, roe deer, moose. Uh, you've seen moose, mm -hmm. both uh, alive and yep, dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, bear has spent uh, fifteen years over here. Yep. And has never seen a, a dead moose out and about and uh, seen two this week. Yeah, two this there. week. One, you guys found one on your first day here that we went up and uh, turns out had been hit by a car way down at the bottom of the mountainside. And he was way up at the top of this big valley. Uh, so he'd run, he'd run a good long ways. And then just this morning, uh, a bull that I've had my eye on all year. Like he've, I've seen him several times I've thought like, oh, this is, that would be cool. Kind of kept tabs on him to the, to the best that I could, you know, the best of my abilities and was hoping to, you know, potentially get him cause he would have been my biggest bull up to this point for sure. And, uh, yeah, found him, I assume hit by a car lying 10 feet from my mailbox this morning, which is just heartbreaking. <laughs> So, yeah, it's been, uh, it, it's been exciting. We've seen, you know, we saw the hare, uh, running right by us. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we saw one in uh, Sweden yep. in, in the headlights one night and then we, they had the hare, uh, with the dog behind it, which yep. is the way I like to see critters. Oh, absolutely. uh, we saw the lynx. That's right. That night yeah. That's headlights. right. Yeah. We saw, there's been a family of lynxes around this area. And, uh, we were just lucky enough to catch one of the kittens in the headlights on the way back, uh, from a small game seminar that, that Kevin spoke at, uh, here. And yeah, I mean, I, I know people who have lived in this area for 60 years and never seen a lynx. So that was, that was cool. Yeah. yeah this my second one. I saw one in, in Canada, um, uh, 
when you're going into to fishing camps. So uh, I like seeing animals. You know, it's more to hunting than just going out there and pursuing the game that uh, you're after. We mm-hmm. see the magpies, the ravens, golden eagle. Yep, saw some golden eagles. Uh, That's right. Trying to think, we was going to make a list, but I think we've got. Um, I think we've got most it of them pretty covered. well covered at this point. So yeah, it's been a, a magical time, unbelievable. I didn't really know what I was getting into terrain wise. Uh, this valley that Bear lives into is just like, hey, no place on earth I know that's that's like this mm. that I've ever been to uh, before. So. Yeah. Oh, I'm lucky. It's a it's a beautiful place and. I feel really fortunate that you wanted to come out and let me show you around. I was kind of hoping we'd have more game to show for it, but that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. And, uh, you know, what we lacking, we lacked in game on the ground definitely made up for in, uh, in, in good times, good conversation, good camaraderie. And yeah, it was, uh, it's been a pleasure, real, real pleasure to have you here. It was much more than I expected. Uh, some things unexpected. Uh, all the different dogs, all the Norwegian elk hound mm-hmm. got to go. Got to go elk hunting. Yep. I mean, not elk hunting. Uh, moose hunting. Moose hunting over Norwegian over elk dogs. hounds. Yep, that was and cool. Then, then, um, the, um, the, the 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 hair dog. That yeah, we had. the Halden hound. And then the dogs that Eric had. Yep. Kind of a custom made. Dog that's not afraid of the wolf. Yep, that's right. Uh, the two different the interiors yep. that were mixed. That's right. Um, beagle. So the beagle. You had to come all the way to Norway to run an American foxhound. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And and your uh, Russian foxhound. Yep. And um, your... Um, um, the American foxhound. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Your, what's, what's your dog's name? Vippy. Uh, Vippy. Mm-hmm. Vippy. And uh, got to see the... The border collies, your sled dogs, mm-hmm. your yard guard Newfoundland, Newfoundland, yeah, yep. uh, dogs. So, uh, trying to think, a few dogs on the road. Jack Russell Terrier yesterday, uh, some kind of bird dog that you wasn't really for sure what it was. Yeah, on the I, side I road. think that was probably a white and a white and red um, Irish setter Titter. is is what I assume that that was because it the the coloring wasn't totally consistent with an English setter, but they do have those white and red ones of the Irish breed over here anyway. Saw a little bit different uh, hunting vehicles, uh, some four wheel drive vans, diesel Subaru. Uh, Eric had a, a Suzu diesel. Mm-hmm. You've got a Toyota diesel, mm-hmm. and uh, that's like I said, I, I, I'm all into different. Animals, hunting equipment, the way we hunt, uh, but when it's all boiled down, we've all got that uh, fire in our eye and that desire in our hunt to follow our hounds. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. No, it's, it's been fun, Kevin. I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming out. I appreciate you sitting down and doing a podcast with me while you've been here. And uh, yeah, I hope, uh, I hope the last few days of your trip is a good one and hope we get you back here at some point. It sounds great. All right. Thanks, Kevin. You're welcome. Man, I love that sound. <laughs>